Bonjour, everyone. Please vote for us to bring another one of these bad boys back to the tune. Two years in a row, we're at the Football Content Awards last year, we won the Best Newcomer. This year, we're up for Best Club Content Creator in the Premier League category. Links in the description. You can also vote on Instagram by tagging in this image. You can also vote on Twitter. Cheers, everyone. Bonjour, everyone. Welcome to the Mac by Channel TV and welcome to Mike Ashley's Newcastle United. You'd think the last decent thing this board could do is secure a young local hot prospect. Matty Longstaff on the verge of going to Italy. Yeah, Udinese. He flew out there before the lockdown, had discussions, had talks. Udinese are offering £30,000 a week. Now, there's been rumours that he was talking to Inter Milan, Marseille, a few others around Europe. Because okay, obviously they watched the Man United game and thought, well, that little ginger bastard. Paul Schools, the next Paul Schools on the move to Europe. I'm all for young English talent going abroad. I think benefited Jane Sancho massively. But when it's your own club and it's your own local lad, and for me, I don't know why he's not been playing more football. I mean, Sean still gets more of a chance than him when I think Matty's been having a better season. We've got Benton there, I think Matty was doing great. You know, Matty grafts his arse off all the time. Yes, he may not be anywhere near the end product yet. But he's got bags of potential there. We've seen it in glimpses. We've seen him with his end product. We've seen his grit and determination in the middle of the park winning the ball. This is a lad we need to keep a hold of. This has got Andy Carroll 2.0 written all over it. Typical Newcastle United for the past 10-15 years under this regime. Letting the best players go. Not replacing them. And learning to regret it. Fair enough. Andy Carroll didn't really kick on too much. He had great spells at West Ham for England in the England show. Obviously injuries derailed him. I think we've let Matty go. It'll be the biggest mistake this club's made in a long time. But Keith Downey from Sky Sports came out last night and said Matty Longstaff has been offered £30,000 a week to sign for Serie A side Udinese. I see the midfielder flew at Italy before lockdown where he held talks over a five-year deal. Longstaff wants to stay in Newcastle, but Udinese's offer is more than double that of Newcastle's. So by the way, he puts here as well, Keith, that's more than 30 times what Matty Longstaff's currently earning at Newcastle who are setting at £450,000 compensation for the 20-year-old. That's going to be fucking pennies. Absolute pennies to come that. Because Matty, I think, will go on to at least be a £20 million player. I really do. I think he'll come back come back to England one day. If he doesn't... Obviously, this is all around the takeover thing as well. So, bearing in mind, we haven't been taken over yet. That's why I'm speaking in this sense. Okay, so if, if the takeover doesn't happen, and he does go, this is, this is what I'm speaking, and we'll move on to if the takeover happens soon. So, Matty will come back to England one day. He will go to... Maybe a Spurs or a Chelsea, I could see him there, Arsenal, and be a top class midfielder. I really believe that. I do believe that. And not just because we're uh, best pals, I'll drink in Malia, yeah. This time last year, me and Matty, Keller Watts, was it? A couple of the other lads. Out in Malia, I met him, recognised each other. Good, good crap, great lad, Matty. Down to earth. Like you say, he wants to play for Newcastle. I've got no doubt about that whatsoever. I know for a fact if Newcastle offered even Matty 25 grand, he would sign that instead of 30 grand to go to Italy. I think it's a very exciting. Prospect for him, to be honest. Learning new language, learning new culture, learning from arguably the best players in the world in Italy, the way the Italians play. The real ginger pillow, Matty Longstaff. But I know for a fact he would stay as local lad. It's all him and Sean would want is to be in that first team, especially if we do take over and had some ambition. I know for a fact Matty would battle for his place and stay if they're offering it. But apparently, you know, like like you said, that's it's more than three times what he's earning at the minute. You know, I think Matty's on what four hundred and fifty quid a week. At the moment in Newcastle, does it say exactly? Some people are saying four fifty a week. Some people are saying eight hundred quid a week. You know, but either or, from that to thirty grand, outrageous. You know, I, I think Newcastle are obviously only going to offer them ten grand a week. A lot of people I've seen when I posted this on Facebook, Instagram, and our Twitter. Make sure you check them out if you don't. At the Mike by Channel, already follow them. People are saying that oh, well, he's not worth thirty grand, so so get rid of him. Joel on is on eighty grand a week. How is Matty Longstaff not worth 30? People seem to forget it. Now we're in 2020. 30 grand a week is nout. 30 grand a week five, ten years ago was loads. Now it's nothing. It is pennies. So it's it's really not that much to tie down a young local English prospect that could go on to be an England regular. He's featured for the for the under groups in, in England. You know what I mean? He could kick on and be a flagship of this Newcastle team in the middle of the park. How great would it be to see a, a local lad in there? I know he's he hasn't played many games and he has played some great games. Obviously, the, the Man United thing comes to mind. But every game you see him give 110%, as any local lad would when they pull on the black and white. But these are the kind of lads you need in and around the dressing room. Grow, give them a chance, keep them at the club. 
Because I, I, I see we will regret it. He will kick on to bigger and better things. Um, first team football. Then bigger and better things can be at Newcastle United if we give him the chance. But he will do well in Italy. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. And I think he will inevitably be in the England team. I really do. Speaking on it as if it was a takeover, wouldn't have this problem. The Premier League need to hurry the fuck up and stop pissing everyone around now. The two to four week process has been going on, what, eight to ten weeks? It's been double that. I know there's like, been project restart. I know there's been a pandemic. I've been one myself who's kept on saying we need patience. Patience is wearing thin now. We're in June. What happened to June the 1st? Yeah, June the fucking 3rd now. And we're best young players are on the way out. Piss take, man. Look, like I see the last thing this regime could do is just tie down Matty. Bide some time. Give fans the fucking refunds, but they're not doing any of that. It's a joke. Absolute joke, Newcastle United. That's, that's why we want this takeover to come. And we don't care where it comes from because we're one ambition and we want the club back. And by having that, you know for a fact the first thing the Saudis would do is give everyone the refunds to the tickets. Probably make a deal on next season's tickets or however that's going to work behind closed doors. And tie down the futures of Matty Longstaff. These key young players. Because the best thing for Matty, if, if he's not getting picked at the minute, would be give him a decent deal. Like I say, he'd probably accept 25 grand a week. Put him out on loan to a championship club. Put him out on loan to Leeds or Swansea or something. Or give him a chance. He scored against... Man United, for God's sake, there's, there's a player in there. There's already talks of Matty actually returning to the Premier League under Udinese on a loan deal, as they've got the linked owners with Watford. They've done it before with previous players, so that's already mooted, yeah, on Sky. Uh, Keith saying it's a possibility further down the line, yes, that Watford could take him on loan. <laughs> and you know you'd score since he was put again, in the wrong colours, in the fucking Bumblebees. That'll do. Let me know in the comments below what do you think. Do you think it is pricey for 20-year-old Matty Longstaff, who has only played a handful of games? Scored two goals against Man United. Is he worth the 30 grand a week? What would you offer him? Do you want him to stay? Are you, are you, are you not bothered? Are you just thinking, right, two goals going to happen anyway. We'll have Vidal. Thank you very much. Yeah? Or two goals not going to happen and Mike Ashley is going to keep on running the club on the ground and let the best players leave. We'll have Bentley on loan. Five-year loan deal. Bentley, that'll do. Let me know. For me, like I say one last time, local prospect, young English talent, time down. That's not that much in this day and age. 20, 30 grand a week. It really isn't huge bags of potential. We'll see that in the future. Even Ashley should look at that from a business side and think about tie him down. That tie him down a 30 grand a week deal over five years is going to cost you seven and a half million pound. You could make that buy sell. I mean, look at Sean was looking for mine eight for 50 million last year. They probably could have sold them for about 30. They've hung on to them thinking they could get more in the future. That's surely the case for Mike. You will make at least 10 million off Matty in another year or two. Even if you put him out on loan. He has a, he has one good loan spell at Charlton, for example. Yeah. Scores a few goals, gets a few assists, impresses a lot of people. A few analysis shows he's worth 10 million after one year. Easy as that. Got to keep him. Got to get this takeover done. Just watch him. Subscribe to my channel TV and enjoy yourself.